Hello, welcome back to another renovation vlog. Um, today it's the 20th, 19th or 20th of August. Um, it's a Saturday as per, as you might know, I went Monday to Friday. So weekends are my only real opportunity to come and do any meaningful stuff down here. And today the plan is to start getting some plaster off the walls. Let me show you. So you'll have seen in the other vlog where we've taken off the skirting board in anticipation. Where you can see no skirting board, that's where the plaster has to come off up to one metre high. Um, so this wall, as you can see, damp, needs to come off. Um, that wall actually is okay. Um, it needs to come off around here and here and here and all inside there and then all the way down there. Um, about halfway along this wall here, down to the door, and the same on the other side. And then finally, um, up to the fireplace there, and then all the way back into that corner, and probably a little bit in there as well. Um, it needs to come off the walls. Um, so that is the plan. I also want to show you, I went to Screwfix. And I have made my first sort of practical purchase, which is all of the sockets and switches throughout the house. We have a vast array of sockets in the house. Um, so the kitchen ones look like this. And moving through to the rear reception room, we have these delightfully mucky chrome ones. And then through in the front reception room, we have these very 90s brass ones that are being painted on. So I really want to replace them. And rather than going for anything fancy, I don't really believe in making swap uh, light sockets and switches um, a feature because to me, I'd rather them be as hidden as possible because they're not aesthetically pleasing. So I've just gone for pure plain white ones, the ones that are sort of a little bit curved, as you can see there. So um, not the cheapest, probably like second cheapest, but they um, decent quality so they won't shatter when you fit them or if they get knocked into, but also, you know, not ridiculously expensive. So I've bought every single light switch, socket um, and whatever in the house, including the pool switches in the bathrooms. And it's cost me 80 pounds and four pence. So really not a huge amount of money. Whereas if I was to go for chrome ones, you'd at least be probably doubling that really. Um, so yes, that is what I have purchased. Um, I bought myself a meal bill because it's lunchtime. So I'm going to eat that. And then we can start getting some plaster off the walls. But I think what I'm going to do first is actually go and warn the neighbours because I am going to be basically hammering against party walls. And it's not really fair of me to do that without letting them know. learned one lesson and that is use a crowbar um hopefully i was able to slow back um down the footage a little bit at the moment at which the plasterboard fully came off the wall as you saw i started off with my hands and it was just coming off in little chunks and i also dug up um some of the rubble that's under the floor 
because it was on top of cables and as you know been having a problem with the electrics i'm still waiting for the electrician to come out um it's not an emergency so he's on with other jobs understandably um as no one is living here um but yeah the crowbar got in there and within a couple of minutes it was all down and look at it it is heavy because it's plasterboard with plaster on top of it and i am not the strongest of people i can lift about 70 kilos at a gym on the machine that's my sort of no i'm lying to you i can't lift 70 kilos i can live like 50 kilos so worse um <laughs> Nice try, Jack. No, um, I weigh 70 kilos, but I can lift 50. That's where I was tripping up there. Anyway, irrelevant. Um, I managed it, but it wasn't hugely easy for me to shift that into that location. Um, but as you can see, um, in the past, they have obviously been trying to deal with damp. And what they've done is they've chiseled off the plaster for the bottom meter, painted this waterproof paint, which is the black stuff, and then dot and dabbed um, over the top of plasterboard. That's called dry lining, and that is often an effective way of preventing damp. However, by using dot and dab, it's allowed moisture to ingress into the timber. What you need to do is fully membrane the walls, not just paint them in this coating. You need a layer of membrane to stop damp coming through and then you apply timber battens over that as opposed to dot and dab because the membrane is not capable of holding up dot and dab and then plasterboard over the timber battens and that's what my damp specialists are going to do and it should should work if it doesn't work then there's not really another solution to it um because that membrane is like a physical barrier whereas a layer of paint that i don't even know that's waterproof paint i'm just guessing it is um, it's not going to work and clearly it hasn't worked because you could see the size of the damp patch that was at the bottom there. So anyway, that's come off. I've also started, started chipping away at the plaster in the hallway. Let me flip you around. Will Apple allow you to flip the camera around during the same video without having to stop and restart? That's annoying. Anyway, you can see the little amount of progress that I've made in here. Um, you can see there the line that I've marked. That's the meter line that I need to take it up to. So yeah, that will be a bigger job than this was because as you can see, that was very easy just pulling the plaster off the walls like that. Um, but yes, the plan is once we've got the plaster off then we can start taking the rest of the floors up and just clearing everything out of them. So as you can tell, I'm a little bit impressed with myself for managing to do that because I've never carried such a heavy load. <laughs> that sounds like a disgusting innuendo. I've never carried such a heavy item unless I've been at a gym. So I managed that on my own without my dad being here and I feel accomplished now because of that. Um, I'm going to reward myself by sitting down and drinking some more Fanta. He is coming this afternoon to help me. Um, I'll see what he thinks of the mess that I've made in here. What we also could do to get it cleared out because a, the electrician will be coming at some point, and B, on Monday, um, Chris from the Damp Specialist Company that I'm using is coming out to meet me here to discuss everything in person, so, especially now that I've uncovered things, so that he can clarify both to me and to himself exactly what he's doing, because obviously when he viewed the property, I hadn't actually bought it. Um, when I say when he viewed it, when he came to do his survey, and he wasn't allowed to do much investigation works because... At that point in time, I didn't own the property. Um, and so it's just going to be good to get him and come and see it in person and just confirm that his suspicions were correct and that they're still going to tackle it in the same way as they have quoted me for. Um, I also need to get him to do a requote because I don't know if I've already said this, but the, they were supposed to do some work within that cupboard there where the gas meter is. I'm not doing that because I'm not paying to have the gas meter removed temporarily relocated and moved back again that'll be thousands of pounds because um the gas board have to do that um or british gas i think is it we don't have a gas board anymore do we i don't know the tories privatized everything it must be british gas and then also they quoted me to do this corner here so behind the radiator and then up to that first cabinet on that wall but i'm just leaving the kitchen all they're going to do is seal the floor joint 
floor to wall joint there um, and in that corner down there um, where it meets external walls just because of the moisture ingress that's been coming through so yeah it'll be really good to talk to him in person but also would rather have it a little bit more cleared than this so that if he wants to look at other stuff there isn't a load of plasterboard and rubble in his way Hello, so it's now Sunday. Um, I was tired yesterday and didn't film uh, what it was like when we have finished up here. So I've come back today because I'm measuring up for some flooring, going to be in queue this afternoon. Um, also did a big screw fix order last night. Um, anyway, sorry, besides the point, come back today. Thought I would show you what state things are in. So in the hallway, we've got all the plaster off where it needs to be. Um, not sure what has gone on there in the past, but something clearly. Um, in here, this is a block work wall because originally the stairs would have come down and they've changed the stairs and bricked that up. So the plaster came off very strangely in there. Um, all in there and in here, we've got a big corner of this wall missing, weirdly. Don't know what's happened there. That was all just filled in with plaster. And if I bring you around here, um, this is the same as the other side of the wall because there it changes the stud work. You can't damp treat stud work. <laughs> you can damp treat bricks though. And yeah, originally there would have been a doorway here. You can see across there, it sort of lines up with that. And then that big line down there, that needs fixing because that's appalling um, before they can plaster over it. But basically we took the plaster off up to there and just realized it was really loose the whole way up there. So we just flicked it all off because otherwise it's going to be a crap job for a plasterer to redo. So there's all that. And then finally, we've got this little bit here. I just need to ask the guy on Monday whether we need to take any off going towards the fireplace or along this wall. Um, and then in here looks much the same as it did, apart from we've cleared up a lot of it. So just the plasterboard that's come down. It looks so much worse in here yesterday because there was a lot more rubble that, as you can see, well, say rubble, plaster dust. This is it all bagged up. We've just got this last little pile here and down there to bag up um, the hallway. I joke you not, was just a sea of plaster the whole way to the front door, a good three or four inches deep. Um, so, yeah. Do you think I need a new letterbox cover? I think that might be a requirement. <laughs> oh, other news. Um, if you can see up there, let me zoom you in. So now, um, before that whole RCD was tripped, whereas now it's just that one, which is the downstairs sockets. So we know that's what's causing the problem. And that means that now I have light. Woo! Um, yeah, it is just the sockets. So all the lights are working now, which is brilliant. Um, the one in the kitchen is a bit jazzy. Let me see if I can get it right. <laughs> if you've got epilepsy, don't watch. But it just... Yeah, that's what it does. Let me turn you around, because that's hurting even my eyes. But yes, um, much better. So, um, plan of attack now is I need to ring the electrician to say that it's definitely the downstairs sockets and also to say that we do need to rip up all the floors downstairs so would it be better for him to come out when that's done because I can manage without the sockets in here the sockets in the kitchen work they're on a different circuit as long as I've got lights which I now have then I'm fine that's the bit that was concerning me as we come into the um sort of autumn winter months 
um, and I'm going to be here on a night, I'm going to need decent lighting, and I now have that. So, yeah, need to ring him, and then meeting the damp man here on Monday to just talk through everything and fully clarify everything that needs to be done. Um, and then I think, basically, me and my dad have said is it makes more sense for us to pull the floors up first um, before they do the walls, because if they do the walls and they're all nicely plastered and we rip the floors up and the walls become unsettled and the plaster cracks, it'll all be to fix. But um, just need to double check with him on Monday what he thinks is best. But yes, as I mentioned, I've done a big screw fix order. I think I'm going to do a screw fix haul because um, I find it exciting. Um, you guys might not, but yeah, I've ordered a fair amount of stuff. Um, and there's more to come. I'm about to order my flooring, as I said, because B and Q have got um, four packs for the fr uh, four packs for the price of three on laminate at the moment. Um, so I'm gonna make the most of that deal, and also three for two on Dulux. I don't love Dulux; I prefer Valspar. But if we can get it cheaper than Valspar, then I'm gonna buy it. Um, so yes, that is the updates for this weekend. Hello, it is now Saturday the 25th, I think, of August, and um, back at the house, as you can see, um, I met with the damp specialist on Monday, I don't think I told, I don't think I've spoken to you since that, so if I'm repeating myself, I'll edit it so that I'm not, <laughs> but um, yeah, I'll talk you through what we discussed. I'm actually going to start off with the kitchen, because... We agreed, or he um, said that I didn't necessarily need to do the works in here because everything that I'm doing outside, as in clearing all this out, sorting the drains out and sorting the gutters out, sorry, the gutters up there, should theoretically help and could solve the problem. And he said, since I'm not ripping the kitchen out, um, what I might as well do is wait until... I am eventually ripping the kitchen out at some point in the future. Um, and at that point, get them to come back in and assess it and see if it's drying out or not. So that was an instant saving. We also agreed not to touch inside here because I'm not paying to have the gas meter moved. And we're not touching this wall here at this side because it is so awkward for them to get to underneath the stairs. He was happy with... Um, the state of this wall and um, the only things that i'm going to do is peel off this black stuff i started as you can see i'm going to carry on get all that off that's really comes off really easily and we just need to pull the back boxes out of the walls because they're putting a membrane on this wall and it wants to go behind the back boxes and this wall will be dry lined with new plasterboard anyway so we'll be buying new back boxes that the upvc ones um specifically for dry lining walls because the plasterboard will come to about here so obviously you don't want to be as they've been doing tying really far back to the back boxes you want them further forward than that on this corner here um so we are treating this wall at this side um just need to take where well, i've taken the plaster off take it all the way around to just where this baton is here so she needs to get his baton off and just get the plaster around because he said basically if there is moisture in this wall it'll force its way out through gypsum plaster so it, if anything in this corner will come out through that through there so we might as well just take it all off um this wall absolutely fine um I explained to him that we'd taken it higher because the plaster work was just crumbling um not a problem and then over here um he asked if we could try and get the fire surround off and take this around the corner here so for them to treat it but he said if not you can just go up to the fireplace but that makes it more difficult in terms of um finishing it off without getting the pla the fire surround covered in plaster but I, i'm potentially replacing this for a beautiful cast iron victorian one um, and then finally everything in the hallway is as was discussed so we're all good to go. So today the first job is to get those other little bits of plaster off that I've just shown you um, and then get all of the rubble cleared up that you've seen across that last clip. 
uh, bagged up and taken outside. Um, my dad's in the process of trying to find someone to take it. We know quite a few farmers and often they um, like to have a bit of rubble on hand to fill in potholes on tracks um, and whatnot. So yeah, we're gonna ring around and see if anyone wants it. Cause if not, I'm just gonna have to pay to take it to the local recycling centre, um, which is a cost I'd rather avoid if I can, but if I can't, I can't. Um, it's no real hardship. Um, and then once we've got all that cleared up, take the floorboards up, um, let's carry on seeing what's underneath them. Um, but I've only got a few hours because I'm going to my friends this evening. However, it is the bank holiday, so potentially um, busy tomorrow, but potentially back on Monday. But yeah, you will see as the video continues. So, got the plaster off the walls, got all the rubble bagged up, all the plaster wall bagged up, and it feels a whole lot tidier in here before we start taking the floorboards up. Just give you a quick pan round. So it's all gone from over there and down there, just once a sweep. In here, all the plasterboards gone, all the rubble that I'd got up, and the whole room just feels massive now. There's Dad. The floor's up in the front room. I'm just about to leave, but I thought I'd better show you before I do. Let me turn you around. Here we are. We've cleared out some of the crap that was under there. There was a whole box that this new fireplace had come in and the old fireplace. Um, I've got to be careful here because I don't want to fall. I've got all the gas pipe under there and everything, so I've got to be careful that I don't stand on that. I can hear my dad's lurking in the hallway. Um, that's a joist down there, look. And here's the water pipe. At some point, the water pipe's burst. And that's what's washed away all this sub base. That's why this bit's so much higher than there. And it's just rotted the end of this joist. But this is the only joist that's going to be replaced, and the rest of it is in good nick, as are the floorboards, so I can reuse them. Hello. So, it is now Monday the... 4th of September, is it, or 5th? Um, anyway, it's Monday, it's the first week of September, and the damp specialists have been in and done their work. So since I was last here taking the floors up, um, nothing's happened because this weekend I was away with all of my extended family. So um, yeah, and didn't really have anything to do until, um, the damp specialist came in. However, the other thing to mention before I got onto the damp specialist's work is that the electrician that I told you about in the previous vlog, um, I was gonna contact one, he has been out and it was actually the wiring that the rubber was on top of that was the issue and the dodgy junction box. So he's rewired what needs to be. He's also earthed the cold feed into the kitchen sink because that hadn't been done um, and just made sure it's all safe and it is, which is brilliant. So um, he just, he's taken all the face plates off the sockets as well, because um, he said they were uh, corroded, which I knew they were. And um, obviously if, I think I already mentioned, I'm replacing all the sockets anyway, so that was fine. Um, so he's basically just said, leave that circuit switched off until you've got the replastered and got the sockets back on um, after that. So. Yeah, that's sorted and that only cost me £90, so I was really happy with that. I was expecting a bigger bill. Um, so yes, can't complain. And also happy with the work that the damp specialists have done, so let me turn you around and show you. So in the front hallway, as you can see, they've put on their waterproof render. Um, this just blocks any moisture from coming through. There's also a damp proof course that's been put in at the bottom of it. So it's all the way through here and all the way in the front room along this wall here and here. And they've put a piece of wood in place just to hold it all in place, but that part of the archway has been done. So I have to be careful because these joists are precarious. And they've done that all the way around there. Then I'll take you in the rear reception room in a minute. Oh. That was close. 
In this corner here, they've put the membrane on, so rather than using the render, this membrane just stops any moisture from protruding through. Forgotten the reason why they wanted to use membrane there, but they know what they're talking about, so they've done that. So that will need um, dotting and dabbing with plasterboard and then plastering over the top and then all of this replastering up here as well. And then I am literally walking a tightrope here. They have done this bit here along the corner of the chimney breast. Sorry for the jangling, got my keys in my hand. Um, yeah, this corner of the chimney breast here because that needed doing as well. And then again, just being careful. <laughs> there we go. Finally, in here. They've used the membrane because this wall is going to be dry lined with fresh plasterboard. So basically it was damped the whole way across there. So they've put in a new damp proof course and also the membrane. And then where the chimney breast has been taken down, um, it still remains at the other side of the wall in the adjoining property. And so um, that wall is still damp because that chimney breast must be drawing moisture through. And so they've membraned all the way up to the ceiling there. So yeah, that'll just be dot and dabbed with fresh plasterboard the entire wall. And then, talking hand, sorry, uh, the plasterboard will just be given a skim coat of plaster. So yeah, um, my sister's partner's dad. <laughs> so her, her potential father-in-law, maybe one day, um, it is a plasterer and has been for 40 years. So um, I'm going to ask him if he can come and have a look at, um, at replastering this for me, um, because obviously um, it will be the best price because he's not going to rip off a potential future in-law. Um, and also he's a lovely guy. And I know that he'll do a really, really good job, which is more important. Um, so yeah, need to get him to come have a look and um, give me a quote for how much that's gonna cost. And in the meantime, um, start getting some floors put down. However, um, my dad, who um, has basically been my free labor, bless him, um, and guiding light because he is far more handy than I. Um, he has a lot more experience than me, given that my experience was next to none. Um, my parents are going away for 10 days. So um, yeah, basically there's no chance of anything really happening because I'm not capable of putting a floor back down on my own. I'd probably do it wrong. And also there's a joist that needs replacing. Um, in fact, let me show you where the rotten joist was. They've actually snapped it off. Let me turn you around. So as you can see here, they've literally just snapped the joist off there. I need to remove that. Um, so yeah, this this joist here needs replacing, obviously, um, before I can do anything else. And then the floor just needs putting back down in this room and through into there as well, where it's taken up. So in the meantime, I think I'm gonna do a bit of decorating with my friends in some of the rooms that haven't been touched as in upstairs and the kitchen maybe. Um, just so that there is some stuff going on. And yeah, that was really going to be it for a couple of weeks. So I think what I'll do is, um, we're at a bit of a natural pause now. So I'll end the vlog here, um, but great progress so far. The floors are up, plasters off the walls. The walls have been sorted by a damp company. Um, so, Almost all of the major works are done. The um, remaining major work is putting the floor back down, um, which I don't want to jinx myself. Shouldn't be too terrible. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Um, I'm not sure when the next one will be, as I say, because it's going to be a while before we get more more momentum. That's a mouthful. And yeah, I will see you again very soon with another video. Bye.